What's going on guys? Mike with Iceberg Gaming. So I did a advanced guide for this game, Vampire Survivors, uh, a few weeks ago, and I've been getting some questions about a uh, new player version of the guide. So I figured I would go ahead and make a guide for you guys that are new players to the game and just starting out. So take a look at this guide and once you've mastered these basics, move on to my more advanced guide and uh, you'll be beating the game in no time. The best place to start is with what character to pick. So what you're going to start out with just Antonio, um, and then you'll get Imelda, Pasqualina, Gennaro, Arca, Porta, Poe, and Morticio. Actually, you should, uh, you might, I got Morticio before Poe, but uh, you might not get him in that order. But anyways, you're going to start with Antonio, and then once you get Imelda, you're going to want to use her, and then you're going to want to use her until you get Gennaro. Now, Gennaro is uh, arguably the best character in the game. Uh, Morticio might be better. There's an argument for either one. But anyways, you're going to want to use Gennaro until you get Morticio and then switch to Morticio. Next, we'll look at the attacks you're going to want to pick up. So here is my tier list for a uh, beginner to vampire survivors. The number one ability you're going to want to get is Garlic. Now, Garlic is not going to be that useful in the late game. Once the enemies start getting more and more HP, it will become less and less useful. But in the beginning of the game, it basically will one-hit uh, the bats. So if you have this, you'll be able to survive very easily at the beginning. So that is a great way to get started in the game as a new player. After that, you're going to want to get the Bible whenever possible. The Bible does a circle around your character, and it will kill enemies in that circle. So it's great for keeping them away from you. Uh, it's great for surviving because it keeps them away from you. You don't have to aim it or anything. Next up, I'm putting lightning as number three. This uh, will randomly strike enemies on the ground and usually it will instantly kill them. I'm putting it as number three because it is, because it is one of the highest DPS abilities in the game and you don't have to aim it and it doesn't rely on any positioning or anything like that. Next up at number four, I'm putting the wand. This ability auto aims for you, so you don't have to aim. It doesn't do as much damage as some of the other abilities, but it can kill the weaker enemies and you can evolve it later in the game once you get more comfortable with how the game works. Next up, I'm putting the Santa Water, uh, aka, Ho AKA Holy Water, but it's Santa Water in the game. Uh, this ability does similar DPS to the Lightning, uh, but it also leaves a puddle on the ground that damages enemies that walk in them. The reason I'm putting it lower than the lightning is because it requires more of an aiming component. So if you're newer to the game, it is a little harder to work with. But once you get used to it, it's a very good ability to, to pick. Next up at 6A and 6B, I've got the pigeon and the ebony wings. These are basically identical. Just one is white and one is black. They, as far as I can tell, do the same damage. They have the same area of effect. Everything about them seems to be identical. And they, they are an AoE attack that goes around your character, so it can help keep you alive by killing things closer to you. They are not the best DPS ability, but I like the fact that it is around your character for a new player to keep you alive better. And I have number seven, the Ruin Tracer. Now, I have this on the list as the last one because it is one of the higher DPS abilities in the game, and you don't have to aim it, and it kind of bounces around and kills a lot of different things. Um, but it, it do, the reason I'm not putting it higher is because it doesn't really push enemies away from your character like some of the abilities higher in the list, but it is a very good DPS ability. Next up, I have my list of the top passive abilities for a new player in Vampire Survivors. So number one obviously is the Duplicator. Now you're not going to get this one until later in the game because it takes a while to unlock, but... If and when you do unlock it, pick it up every time it's available. It's a, it's a fantastic ability. It basically does makes all of your attacks do one extra projectile, which is insane. Very good damage. Next up, we have the Spinach. This is a flat increase to all of your abilities damage. Very powerful, especially later in the game once the enemies get stronger. I'm putting Crown as number three. The Crown increases the experience you gain. And I like this for a new player because it lets you level up faster so you get more and more abilities and become powerful more quickly. For number four, I'm putting in the wings. This is the ability that makes your character move faster. This is great for a new player to be able to dodge better by moving out of the way faster. 
And next up at number five, I'm putting the Attract Orb. This is the ability that makes you pick up things in a bigger radius. I like this for a new player because it means you have to take less chances in picking up the uh, experience orbs and food, etc. They will come to you more easily if you have the Attract Orb. At number six, I'm putting the Heart. A flat increase in your health. It gives you a little more wiggle room. Uh, so if you get hit, you will not die as, as easily, obviously. And that gives you a chance to get some food and recover. And I've got Clover at number seven. This is a flat increase to your luck. Now, the luck is a little ambiguous, but from what I've been able to tell, it seems to increase your critical chance uh, as well as give you a better chance of getting more and better uh, upgrade choices from the chess. Now let's take a look at what you want to buy once you start earning some coins. So let's go into the power-ups. Now, in my opinion, the first thing you want to do is max out greed. This gives you 10% more coins for every rank you put into it. This lets you get more coins faster to buy the other upgrades faster. Now, this takes a high level of coin investment to reach, but I think it is worth it. Other than that, you want to go with growth to have increased experience for your character. Uh, I think amount is probably the most powerful upgrade in the game. It gives you another projectile to all weapons, as well as flat damage bonus is very helpful. And you can do armor and health and recovery as well. Those are very helpful for staying alive for a new player. Next, we'll go over some in-game hints for you. So I've got my garlic on here. So I'm what I, I'm just going to do versus these weak enemies is I can just kind of stand still and the garlic will mow through them. But once you get to a the stronger enemies or you don't have the garlic yet, what you want to do is just circle around. And early in the game, you want to practice kind of cutting through to get the feel of how the controls work. I play with the keyboard, uh, WASD is the movement. You can also move with the mouse, but I don't think it is very, uh, I, I don't like it personally, but you can do it. And if you have like a uh, game pad or a joystick, that would be probably the best way to go. It is, as far as I know, uh, game pad supported. Another hint is you wanna look for the light sources. In the library, we have these candles. In the forest, we have uh, brazers, and you wanna open them up uh, by killing them uh, whenever you can. You always want to be picking up the coins as long as you're not going to take damage to do so. And the light sources can also give you the food items which recover your health. They can also give you power-ups like uh, freezing time and you can, they can give you an attract orb. There's the freezing time. They can give you an attract orb which will suck up all the experience out on the map which is very helpful especially if you have been fighting for a while against a lot of enemies and they have experience all over the map. This is especially helpful in the forest. One thing to keep in mind when trying to follow this or any guide is that the abilities that you get are RNG dependent, so you might not always get the abilities you want. That is why I gave you more than six choices in my tier list, because you only get six abilities per run. So try to focus on those, but if you can't get them, just make the best of whatever your choices are. If you follow this guide with a little bit of practice, you should start reliably passing the 20 minute mark. And once you do so, and you've got a feel for the game, I recommend you switch over to my advanced guide. The link will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, comment any, any questions in the comment section, comment for the algorithm, subscribe for more, and thank you so much. We'll see you next time.